Batteries are becoming more important as the world moves away from fossil fuels and toward emissions free electricity. In the early 1990s, lithium ion batteries were introduced to the market for the first time, and they are, to date, the preferred option for everything from mobile phones to electric cars and drones. Batteries are manufactured mostly by firms such as Tesla, Panasonic, LG Chem, BYD China, and SK Innovation, almost all of which are headquartered in China, Japan, or South Korea. Dozens of new competitors are joining the fray, and investors are pouring cash into startups they feel are on the verge of making a big success because they recognize the enormous potential rewards that lie ahead. One such business is CATL, which is assisting NEO in the development of a battery pack that will reportedly have a greater range than the Lucid Air? Is the battery technology superior to that of Lucid's? Is it possible for the manufacturer to compete with them? Stick around till the end to find out the answer to these questions. Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder that subscribing is free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar content. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. In comparison to Tesla and its vociferous CEO Elon Musk, CATL, whose formal name in English is Contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited, has remained mostly hidden in the background of the electric vehicle revolution. Robin Zeng is the company's founder and chairman, and is one of Asia's richest individuals, having amassed an estimated fortune of $60 billion. China's city of Ningde is the site of the company's HQ and some of its most important plants, which are structured like large lithium battery. Several types of papers, especially those dating back to the early days of CATL, have been restricted in access by the local administration. After the government announced that electric vehicle owners would only be eligible for incentives if the battery was manufactured by a Chinese business, the company profited significantly from the Chinese government's campaign to encourage cars to utilize solely domestic manufactured batteries. Solid or semi-solid state batteries have been the focus of the company's recent efforts. However, the booming Chinese battery business has resulted in a scramble for clout and automotive contracts that may be the subject of a TV series. The subject of creativity is revealed in a new investigative study that raises the lid on the people who make things happen. It turns out that CATL, which counts the majority of the world's leading electric vehicle manufacturers among its customers and is the world's biggest EV battery firm, may have traded R&D spending for superior mass production efficiency. When NEO contacted its exclusive battery supplier, and asked it to manufacture the 150 kilowatt hour semi-solid state battery pack that the ET5 and ET7 cars would utilize to achieve their stated 600 plus mile range, CATL supposedly glanced at the concept. Given the fact that such a battery has never been produced on large scale before, the Chinese cell manufacturer believes it will have to spend much more in research and development as well as new manufacturing equipment and technologies in order for the project to be as economically feasible. Because of this, NEO was compelled to join up with a smarter, more agile rival, We Lion New Energy Technology, that took the issue seriously and collaborated on the development of the world's first semi-solid state battery pack of 150 kilowatt hour capacity. In order for NEO to meet its goal of 1,000 kilometers, or 626 miles in a single charge for its new products to be introduced next year, the company requires a new technology. And that was the semi-solid battery tech. Upon realizing that NEO had effectively constructed the groundbreaking 150 kilowatt battery with another business, CATL is sent to ever return to the negotiating table and is currently creating the new battery for NEO. The company's semi-solid battery, on the other hand, will use a different technology known as ultra-high nickel, 
which has the potential to bring in a completely new age of longer-range electric vehicle batteries. So much so that it's in the executive's key performance indicators. Electric vehicles might soon be powered entirely by solid-state batteries, which have solid rather than liquid electrolytes to move ions between electrodes during charging and discharging. If solid electrolytes are used, they allow for a major improvement in battery safety, the use of novel kinds of anodes such as lithium metal, and an increase in energy density that is almost double that of current lithium-ion battery cells. They offer a significant improvement in range as well as a reduction in charging times. But Henrik Fisker has a much different view on the technology. He said, I personally do not really believe that we are anywhere close for solid-state batteries to materialize into production vehicles, so that one for me is out the door. In an increasingly Chinese-dominated supply chain, the battery behemoth serves as a vital connection. Chinese enterprises, notably CATL, have obtained large quantities of the raw materials that are used in the manufacture of these batteries. Beijing's growing supremacy has stoked worries in the United States that Detroit may be left outdated and that Beijing may one day be able to exert influence over American driving in the same manner that oil-producing countries did in the 20th century. Chinese government officials worked hard to ensure that CATL's operations remained in Chinese hands. They were able to build a captive market of battery purchasers. And when CATL needed money, they were quick to provide it. Despite the fact that the company was able to produce a battery pack that allows a vehicle to go more than 600 miles, Chinese manufacturers might be able to achieve that target, but it will be by simply adding more kilowatt-hour batteries and making little improvements to the efficiency of their batteries. And it's in this area that Lucid Group distinguishes itself from the rest of the competition. For the time being, CATL is constructing a massive facility in the Nevada desert that will be more than three times the size of Tesla and Panasonic's electric vehicle battery gigafactory. The company is building one of eight massive factories totaling more than $14 billion. The business has gathered little armies of construction workers to build steel-walled structures that are 50 feet tall and stretch for more than five football fields in length. In the electric automotive race, batteries, which were formerly regarded to be one of the least intriguing automobile components and are considered to be one of the most exciting sections of the automotive business, when it comes to battery tech, it is advancing at a rate that is similar to the early days of personal computers, mobile phones, and even vehicles. And an infusion of finance has the potential to produce the next Steve Jobs or Henry Ford. What are your opinions on the matter? What do you believe the future of battery technology will be? Do you feel that semi-solid state batteries will be the future? or that they'll just be an alternative to LFP technology? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Speaking on the issue of the transportation system's future, a former naval pilot offers a somewhat different take on the matter. He thinks that the fuel cell, or more specifically, hydrogen fuel, is the superior alternative for automobile transportation. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing is still free, and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.